A really important aspect of theoretical computer science is critical thinking and problem solving. And decomposition is a technique that falls under this category. This is breaking a problem down into sub-problems. So the economy could be a problem and we can break it down into uh, four aspects and then more indicators that fall under those sub-problems. So you can further divide sub-problems into more sub-problems. And each of these sub-problems should be of a similar level of detail. So you want to keep things relatively similar and each one needs to accomplish an identifiable task. So each does something very specific, something you can identify as being an aspect of the problem. So you need to divide it so that you can solve each sub-problem independently. You want them to be not completely linked so you can tackle each sub-problem independently of each uh, of the others. And importantly, you need to be able to combine your solutions of the sub-problems to be able to solve the overall problem. This is very difficult to do, but this is a, a technique you can use to help solve problems. Sometimes the problem itself is too difficult to solve without breaking it down into more manageable pieces first. Abstraction is a really important technique and it crops up all the time in computer science. I'll say something's abstract really often in these set of videos. So abstraction as a process is removing unnecessary detail from a problem. It's almost like you to make a problem more meaningful you can strip away some detail. So an example which I thought was quite original but apparently lots of people use this example is like the tube map. So this is what the tube map looks like if it was kind of laid out to you know the geographical nature so this is how the tracks actually look like if you could see them from uh, the air whereas the actual tube map is this abstracted version a simplified version you don't need to know if you're a tourist or if you're just trying to navigate across land you don't need to know that the lines are shaped in a weird way you don't, it doesn't matter all you need to know is how they connect and so a much clearer a much more simplified version without things like parks and streets is fine it's a lot simpler and it's a lot easier so that's why you have this abstracted version, abstracting away some of the unnecessary details. And of course, you could abstract this even further. And this is the actual layout, but this is an abstraction because this isn't what it looks like clearly. There's no satellite images and you obviously can't see the lines. So this is an abstraction in itself. And often we're dealing with several layers of abstraction. So on that theme, an entity is only abstract relative to the layer below. So we're talking about layers and levels in this case. So an example of abstraction we do all the time when we're programming is when we're programming we're not considering the actual detail of what's happening right at the bottom. We have several layers. So right at the very bottom, at, at the core of what's happening in a computer is just voltage levels. It's wires with voltage. Then you have sort of zeros and ones which are a slight abstraction because they're not considering the complexities of the actual electronics. You're just dealing with binary zeros and ones. But even that's too complicated really, I mean it's very simple but it's complicated for us to understand so we abstract some level, some details away to create assembly code which is something you may have come across then we have high level code which is just your program code which is completely different to what's actually happening at the bottom, it's a complete abstraction and we wouldn't be able to code nearly as well as we do if we had to constantly consider what's happening at a very low level. So I've seen a few more things about abstraction and to get comfortable with the term you kind of have to use it in lots of different contexts and as I say I'll repeat it throughout loads of videos because it crops up all the time. So as I say in problem solving abstraction simplifies the problem so when you're divine, when designing an algorithm you can ignore implementational details so that's why an algorithm is abstract it's, it's separate to uh, the actual details of where you maybe would implement it in code or it's separate to a certain machine so when you actually program an algorithm. An algorithm might seem really simple. When you program it, it becomes a lot more complicated. You have to do things like validation for constructs, the code users is different to what you just do in pseudocode. So it, it becomes more complicated. But when you're designing an algorithm, you want to keep things nice and simple. So you remove those unnecessary details, you abstract them away. And a model is just an abstraction, a generalized view of the essence of a problem is what a model is. So going back to the economy example, you can't if you wanted to do a simulation of the economy, you can't completely replicate it, it's way too complicated. Instead, you would create an economic model that simplifies it, that is an abstraction of the actual reality. A potential mistake you can make of this topic is saying that abstraction is the opposite of decomposition. Some people think that, and you can see why, in a sense, decomposition is kind of breaking something down, whereas abstraction is kind of almost like building something up, but they're not the same, they're not, of course they're not the same, they're not the opposite, they're two separate terms. There's not really an opposite of abstraction. Um, 
like an implementation is kind of the opposite of abstraction but not directly. Decomposition has got an opposite which you don't need to know about so we won't go into it. A kind of buzzword in computer science education is algorithmic thinking. It comes up all the time and it's difficult to define what it is but if you do get asked about it I want to give you some pointers. So really this is about a skill set, a set of abilities related to problem solving and algorithms. So an example would be the ability to analyse requirements of a solution so you get given um, a problem and you you analyze what's required of a potential solution to it so you may have done this in your coursework being able to communicate and specify a problem so being able to work out the essence of a problem maybe using abstraction to do this because as I say like a problem like the economy is too difficult to fully communicate and actually specify to nail down the, the issues so you'd have to remove some details to do this um, actually designing an algorithm is clearly related to algorithms and is part of this algorithmic thinking and elements of this like having considered special cases an algorithm should be a general case so it should really consider most possibilities so you'd have to consider that as well and also improve efficiency it's all well and good designing an algorithm but it's very inefficient but it's never going to be used so you need to improve efficiency and be able to recognize where a operation is inefficient and how you can make it more efficient